This eggless cinnamon rolls recipe is the bomb and in this video tutorial I'm spilling all the juicy secrets to make it light, fluffy and soft. Let's get started by adding some lukewarm milk, yeast and sugar in the bowl of your stand mixer. Give it a quick mix and add the rest of the ingredients that includes milk powder, 420 grams of flour and salt. Note that I'm mentioning 420 grams of flour, I'll let you know why. Give a quick mix using the dough hook attachment and then start kneading using the lowest speed on your mixer until it comes together then gradually increase the speed to medium high and knead for 6 minutes. Now if you find that the dough is too sticky add more flour to adjust until it forms a solid mass of dough. That's why we just begin with 420 grams of flour and gradually add more flour if needed because every brand of flour is different. So yeah, you have to make a judgment here. What you're looking for is that it should not stick to the sides of the bowl when lifted with the hook as seen in this picture. So this is the wrong method. You have to get it to a stage where you, uh, you can easily lift it. Um, as you can see on the screen now the difference between the two so that's what you are aiming for and as of now after six minutes when you will check the dough you will find that it will be dry which is how it will be as we have not added any fat sauce yet which is butter in our case note the consistency of butter here butter needs to be room temperature or softened too cold butter would not combine with the dough and melted butter would make the dough sticky. So this method of adding the butter at a later stage is called delayed fat method. Butter usually inhibits the gluten formation and adding it at a later stage ensures that you are giving time for the gluten to form which is essential for the bread to rise and remain soft. Initially the butter would stick to the sides of the bowl and look messy, it's okay, totally okay, just keep kneading on medium high speed and it will come together eventually. And if you feel that the dough is wet and is sticking even after 4-5 to five minutes of me kneading, then feel free to add a little more extra flour to get the right consistency. What you are aiming for once the dough is ready is that it should feel moist but not wet that is it should not stick to your hands. So here is an example of sticky dough. This video footage is from my trial rounds of making cinnamon rolls, eggless cinnamon rolls I mean. So you do not want anything of this sort or else you won't be able to shape the dough later on. The dough that you get should feel moist, it should be tacky. To understand what tackiness is you can watch our pita bread video where I explain it in much details. Okay, the dough is not sticking to my hands, it feels bouncy, soft and smooth and is now ready to be proofed for which I am going to oil the same bowl in which we kneaded it and place the dough for the first proofing which is one and a half hours. All the relevant links for everything mentioned in the video will be shared in the description box below so definitely worth a check. Now while that is proofing, let us prepare the cinnamon sugar mixture for which simply mix the ground cinnamon and sugar to a homogeneous mixture and set it aside. This is also the time to take the required amount of butter for the filling and set aside so that it comes to room temperature and is soft enough to be spread on top of the dough. After one and a half hours, take the dough and punch it down to release the gases. This is my favorite part of making a bread dough. Let me know if it is yours too in the comments below. We will then shape it into a rectangle of 20 by 18 inches using a rolling pin. This dough is so soft and so pliable that you can also use your hands to shape it into a rectangle if you do not have a rolling pin. Smear the softened butter all through the dough and sprinkle the prepared cinnamon sugar mixture on top leaving a little space on the edges simply because when you start rolling it the cinnamon sugar tends to pop out so just to avoid that just leave a little onto the edges. Now we will roll it from the longest side to form a tight cylindrical roll. Sometimes when you roll it up, the other edge would start unfolding so make sure that you are going back and roll it up again. Gently press it down if needed to secure it in place then continue rolling. Then continue rolling. This ensures that there is tight and even rolling. Yes, make sure that you roll it into a tight log. Uh, note that I am repeating it uh, multiple times. That's the key point. Um, as the tighter the dough, the prettier it will look once cut. Then trim the edges from both the sides and cut them into 12 pieces of approximately 4 inches each. You can also make use of unflavored dental floss to cut the dough but it's not needed. Trust me, a simple bend scraper or a sharp knife, serrated knife I mean works perfectly fine too. 
Um, before we place it on a baking tray, we will grease it with some butter. Then take one piece at a time and gently pat the edges to give it a circular shape and, and place it onto the greased baking tray with the cut side down placed evenly apart. Do not make the mistake of crowding the dough in a small pan as you want the dough to spread wider and not bulge in the center. So the pyramid like shape sometimes you get the rolls just pop out in the center. That's when it does not have enough space to proof. So yes, uh, don't make that mistake. Cover it with a tea towel and allow for second proofing until the individual circle rises and touches each other. It would take around 40 minutes but do not go by the time, rather look for the dough to stick to each other like this. The time may vary. If it doesn't stick to the sides of the pan on the edges as you can see right now, it is okay. The important thing is that it should stick to each other. Once proven, bake the dough in a preheated oven of 190 degrees Celsius for 20 to 25 minutes or until golden brown on top. Also choose a ceramic or an aluminium baking tray. Glass trays conduct more heat causing the rolls to brown a lot especially the ones on the sides. I am soon going to upload a detailed tutorial on making the icing but in brief all you have to do is using a handheld mixer beat the softened button, icing sugar and vanilla essence or vanilla extract until combined. Add the milk a little at a time and beat till it looks light and fluffy. In place of this butter based frosting you can also opt for a royal icing or even cream cheese frosting to go on top of our cinnamon rolls. Both the recipes are linked in the description box below. Once baked and while the rolls are still warm, I am repeating it again because if the cinnamon rolls are too hot the butter will melt and ooze to the bottom of the tray rather than seeping into the rolls themselves. So if it is too cold the butter won't melt at all and you will will have that thick coating of icing on top which is not spread it all across evenly so you do not want that as well what you are aiming for it is warm so that the butter in the icing melts just lightly and is seeped into the rolls you get the point right <laughs> trust me these eggless cinnamon rolls recipe is as good as those made with eggs If you have any leftover cinnamon rolls, don't let them go to waste. You can of course store it in the fridge or freezer and reheat when needed. Place a roll on a microwave safe plate and warm it up in the microwave for 30 seconds at an interval of 15 seconds each. Or reheat for 7 to 10 minutes in a 350 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven just before serving to get that fresh out of the oven taste and softness to the rolls. To freeze the cinnamon rolls, wrap the rolls tightly in a cling wrap, then place it in a ziplock bag thoroughly labeled. Now put it into the freezer and it will stay good for 3 months. For more instructions on properly storing the rolls, instructions on freezing the unbaked cinnamon rolls so that you can bake them fresh in the morning. Yes, yes, the instructions on that and also many other tips and tricks can be found on the blog post, the link for which is shared in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. My kid surely did. Like this video if you did or dislike if you didn't. Make sure to subscribe for the love of baking. I'll see you soon with yet another one. Until then, this is Sushma signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.